Welcome back to The Deep Dive, where we turn your source material into fascinating, concise insights. Today, we're aiming high, uh, really high, into a defining period of modern history, the Cold War space race. Yeah, and it's so easy to just think of it as, you know, exploration, Bruh. the moon landing, all that glory. Right. But our sources frame it as something, well, something darker. Mm -hmm. A kind of silent war fought way above the earth where every scientific win had this huge strategic meaning behind it. Okay, let's get right into that because you have the U.S. and the USSR, right? They come out of World War II as these rival superpowers and they immediately start to kind of weaponize the sky. Exactly. It wasn't just about setting records. It was about dominance, which back then was the same thing as national survival. Precisely. And our mission in this deep dive is to explore how that intense fear-driven competition became this this unintended engine for global progress. We're looking at the uh, the two faces of the rocket. A tool for discovery or a tool for destruction. <laughs> exactly. The core belief then was simple and it was stark. If you control space, you control the future of the world. And to get that future, we have to look back at some really murky origins for the technology. The foundation for both the American and Soviet space programs, it doesn't start in the 50s. It goes right back to Nazi Germany. This is where the story basically becomes a huge intellectual property heist. I mean, the yeah. basis for all Cold War rocketry was the Nazi-developed V-2 rocket. The first long-range guided ballistic missile. The very first. It was a terrifying weapon. And as soon as Germany surrendered, both the U.S. and the Soviets kicked off these intense missions. So it wasn't a land grab, it was a brain drain. That's the perfect way to put it. They were racing to capture German scientists, guys like Wernher von Braun, and just as important to get their hands on all the research, the blueprints, the data. The historical record is really clear on this. Knowledge became the most valuable prize of all. Wait, so the same fundamental engineering, these stolen ideas, as you put it, that would eventually take astronauts into orbit was, at its heart, designed just for wartime destruction. That's the really painful paradox here. You just okay. can't separate the hope of space exploration from the uh, military need for long-range delivery systems in that early period. Hmm. The V-2 expertise they captured gave them the absolute foundation they needed for what would become their intercontinental ballistic missiles, their ICBMs, which we'll definitely circle back to. So the ideas are secured, but now both sides need a big global stage to prove what they can do. And that stage just appears dramatically in October 1957. That date is the turning point, no question. The Soviet Union launches Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite, and the shock was just instantaneous yeah. and global. It was tiny, right, like the size of a beach ball. Yeah. But our sources point to one key detail, the sound, that simple, steady beep, beep that Sputnik sent out as it circled the Earth.